Okay, so this is the Ubuntu desktop that in my last video I installed on this Dell Optiplex 7010. Right now we got OBS Studio running. I didn't really install a bunch of programs. I did install some stuff that I wanted to make sure it worked, like Audacity and OBS Studio is running right now. It's working just fine. Shotwell, Qubit Torrent, that, that works. VirtualBox, all that works. What I'm saying, I guess, is any program that I need and a lot that you might need is available. Now, I'm going to bring up my notes here. This is Ubuntu 24.04, the LTS Noble. Country of origin is the Isle of Man. Here's the web, web link or the link to the web page, Ubuntu.com, and then you have Ubuntu.com desktop and then the flavors, which it comes in different flavors, KDE, XFCE, and others. 24OS Noble, this is the kernel version 6.8.0. GNOME 4601. This come right off of the wiki here. I'll leave it right there for a second and you can read it if you'd like. Pause the video. It basically tells you what is Ubuntu. is a Linux distribution derived from Debian and composed mostly of free and open source software. Initial release, October 2004. So we're coming up on the 20 year anniversary. The license and agreement, marketing, OS family is Linux, Unix-like. If I run an INCI or INXI, hyphen capital S-A-G-M. The desktop is known until we knew that. 2404 LTS. The system is the Dell Optiplex 7010. Now when you first boot in and you log in with your name before you set your password, you'll see a gear cog down in the lower right hand side of your screen. And with that, you're able to select your display server. Initially, or by default, it's going to be set to X Wayland. And I changed that. In fact, I didn't wait too long before I changed that. Okay, so that is your option. You can run x Wayland and see how you like it or if it works for you. If it works for you, great, keep using it. But in my experience so far, I'm happy with X11. The audio is running Pipewire and it is active. Not installed by default is FFmpeg, which I was very surprised by that. And these next three are kind of here or there, it doesn't really matter. NCRI, INXI, ScreenFetch, and HTOP. Now what is installed by default here, which I find interesting, I'm going to plug in this USB drive, or thumb drive. I believe it's an 8 gigabyte. And I'm going to look for this program right here. It's called USB Creator GTK. So open up the menu. I'm just going to type in USB and it'll say Startup Disk Creator. And I'm going to get this started because it'll take a minute to complete what I want now. Right here is your first thing. You get your options to choose. Let's see if I can make this. What ISO you want to choose. You'll notice all of these are Ubuntu or Ubuntu based. And if I click on Other, and go to my downloads here, you'll see I got Arch Linux there, ISO, and the rest of these are Zubuntu. So I'm gonna click on Arch Linux just for the demonstration here, and you'll see it did not show up. So let me go back to here to other, go back to downloads. Let's go with Zubuntu, say open, and there it is there. This is the correct USB. I'm gonna say make startup disk. Am I sure? Yes. It's going to ask for your password, and this will take a little while. But what I want to show comes after it gets through writing. So meanwhile, let me bring my notes back up. And that was, or this is running USB Creator. It also comes with a Snap Store or App Center. And I got to say, Ubuntu loves snaps. This is the default list, and I just ran it a while ago, and it's the same. There's nothing but added. I'll show you one of the things I, I personally don't like about the snap list. Let me bring up a terminal. There we go. Now, typically, you could run an LSDLK, and you would see your hard drive, or SSD, or NVMe, or whatever you're running, and you would see 
those three partitions are right here. <laughs> so you, you see in all these loops they're called from the snaps and, and I, I, th I find that very confusing especially if I was a very new user I wouldn't have a clue what this was I wouldn't even use the LSBLK command because it would scare me here's what you can do you can say this free hyphen capital TH and then specify the this device SDA and let's go three and you can see it shows us the del uh, file type is ext4 it's 101 gigs we've used 26 gigs 71 gigs is available we we have used 27 percent so i'm going to control l and clear that screen while we're here let's run a u name to prove the kernel 680441 and let's run a screen fetch Again, this is 2404 Noble. Got on 46 desktop. And I got 16 gigs of RAM. Intel Core i3. Not really much to show there. Okay. So that just about takes care of my notes here. And so what I'm going to do right here while this is writing, pull this down here and put it in the middle of the screen. While this is writing, I'm going to pause the video. I'll be back when it gets through, or just before it gets through. So it's still working, it's 29%, but I wanted to show a little glitch here, and I'm not sure what it is. Maybe one of you can tell me what it is. On uh, the files icon and right here, it's showing me a one. And no matter what I do, and have looked, explored, I cannot find why that's a one right there i thought maybe it was indicating that my trash needed emptying but there's a recycle bin or trash can right there and it's empty or it was empty let me empty it again empty trash i did this once and you'll see it's still there so i'm not sure what that is so if you see that there and you're wondering what it is i don't know <laughs> We paused the video, we're on 36%. So it's at 81% now, as you can see. So hopefully we'll be through in just a second. Meanwhile, bring up my downloads folder. I want to just double, I want to say this twice. The USB hyphen creator hyphen GTK doesn't seem to pick up any other distros except those based on Ubuntu. So that's awesome, and I'll, I'll show you one of the benefits as I, as I see it here when it gets through. I'm going to fast forward in these parts right here since it's almost through. I don't want to, I want you to see it actually get finished and then what my options are. Now, this is available as well in the AUR, but it's not called USB hyphen creator hyphen GTK. It's just usb creator and again i did download it installed it on my art system and it's there and it will work for ubuntu and ubuntu based distros i don't know about the other any other ones i just know the official ones so far that that i checked are the ones that are recognized now there may be a ubuntu spin out there somewhere that won't be recognized I apologize for taking so long to do this video. I almost bypassed it and went into something else, but I got several new subscribers here recently, and for them, I'm showing you what you're going to get. This would be the, after you watch the install video, this would be the desktop. Installation is complete. You may now run Ubuntu on other computers by booting them. You see right here where it says test disk. I'm going to click on that. It's going to require a password. Now watch this. This is running Kimu, and I didn't install Kimu. So Kimu apparently is installed by default with all of its dependencies. Now I'm going to be quiet here so I can fast forward through this. It will take a minute. It's running off of the USB. 
the the benefit is I see this if you install Ubuntu the default version and get the GNOME desktop like you see here and you think you've been in it a little while and you say well I'm not so sure it's just for me let me see what else Ubuntu offers so then you can go there and download one of the flavors run a startup disk like I just did here you can actually test it out and look around in it right here you won't have to pull the USB and then boot into it on another machine or even boot into it on your machine risking the I mean there is always a risk that you could mess something up or it could mess something up and you would lose your system to start with so this is a fail safe way to actually run the system a minute and if you noticed also it didn't ask me how many megs of RAM do I want to give it or swap none of that disk size and this is pretty much exactly what you would see if you booted into this USB drive now, it might be a little faster it probably would because it would be able to use your system's resources and I don't know let's see let's see what this is saying I'll be surprised it's not running much it's not considering I got OBS running uh, that's not too bad CPUs is a hundred percent. Let's see if uh, H top will verify that. Yep, pretty much, hundred percent on the CPUs. Nominal on the RAM. I guess a better way to look at that would be to go to the process. Processes. This is Quee Move. It is a system D system. Not seeing it right off. No shell. No system monitor. Here it is, probably. Nope, that's OBS. Well, either it's not showing it or I don't know what to look for, or I just didn't see it, which that's probably it. <laughs> Looks like we're getting close. Still not showing my mouse. There's a mouse. In and out. Excellent. We're getting close. I see the USB drive is still flashing, so we're loading. The date and time is wrong. The date is right. The time is wrong. That's all right. We're about to have a desktop here. Now, obviously, if you had a faster machine, this would load faster as well. Getting somewhere. There's more taskbar. Sys tray. Volume. All right. There's our desktop, however, there, the USB is still flashing. Let it finish loading for a second here. All right, I think that's it. There's the menu up there. We get the whisker menu out of the box. And let's see, wonder if Control-Alt-T in Zubuntu brings up a terminal. Nope, that's wrong terminal. <laughs> there we go XFCE terminal nice so so for the kernel here we're running the 68031 the other one was a 4 I believe let's see what top says we're running here 967 900 I'm sorry 961 megabytes being used not bad not bad so that's what I mean you get the you decide you don't like this one shut it down and, and use the startup disk creator to create another ISO or image in this case you know, cinnamon, Ubuntu cinnamon, the one we're looking at is this one right here. 
Ubuntu desktop. That's the one that's installed. And so that gives you all kind of options and you don't have to install VirtualBox or anything. It's already prepared for you. And to me, that's this is an awesome system. Power this off. Maybe. There we go. That is Ubuntu. Here it even has the installer. Now, I don't know. It might wipe out the whole thing. I'm not sure. I hadn't tried that. That might be an interesting thing to try. Let's see if you can actually install it over the top of Ubuntu that's installed and running. Pretty nice. You can close down if you want to. Might tell me to take the USB out. I don't think so, but maybe. I know it's flashing. Yep, I think it's switching to tell me to take it out. I wish it would hurry up. <laughs> Quit flashing. Nope, flashing again. There we go. All right, now let's get rid of that disk, get it out of the system here. Zubuntu, let's take it out. It's safe to unplug. Let it quit flashing and pull it out. Now it's gone. This is Ubuntu. I've, I've installed Ubuntu on the last video I did. And on this video, uh, you, you can see uh, it, the system works. Uh, everything that I've installed works just like it should. I have no crashes, nothing really bad to report. Some good things I found that was pretty nice, finding the, the uh, USB creator. That was actually very nice. One thing before I close this out, I want to tell you that I am going to, I'm contemplating and serious about opening up another YouTube channel or starting a, another YouTube channel. And it's going to be dealing with air guns. Air guns have come a long, long way since I was a kid. I actually shot myself in the hand when I was about 11 years, well, I was about nine years old just to see if it would hurt and it bounced off my hand. So they've come a long way, trust me. So I'll be looking forward to that and uh, I expect, I hope to see a bunch of you over there. You might be surprised about some of the, the machines that they have now, the air rifles and air guns, period. So that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you watching. I very much appreciate all of my new subscribers. I think I'm up to 993 now. Seven more. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you on another video. Peace out. Bye.